Lisa. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be eating Japanese foods or foods from Japan for 24 hours. These 24 hour food challenges are super hyped right now and I wanted to do something similar with different cultural foods. So I'm thinking of starting a new series where I explore different cultures and their cuisines and try to recreate some of their popular dishes. I feel like starting this new series, it'll push me to try new things out, learn about different cultures and their cuisines, and as a bonus, get recipe inspiration for the blog. I did one of those question things on Instagram to see which country you guys would like to see first and so many of you guys said Japan and Japanese food so I mean I guess it's like a good way for me to ease into this series but I think it's still gonna be a little bit of a challenge I'm really excited because I don't cook Japanese vegan food often and I wish I did but yeah I'm gonna see what I can make I have a lot of things I want to make in mind but instead of making the dishes I usually make I thought I'd try and recreate some of my childhood favorites that are like easier and simpler to make well actually some of them are kind of cool but so I think that's everything I want to say before getting started and I'm really hungry so let's go make some breakfast. For breakfast I was thinking of making some natto gohan with some miso soup and some fruits and I thought it'd be fun to kind of like try and make a raw egg on top so kind of like a... what's that called? Um, tamango kaki natto gohan but I don't really know how it's gonna work because the egg white is like slimy but the natto is already slimy so i might just try and make the egg yolk for flavor and keep it raw because japanese people eat their eggs raw on over rice so i might try to do that and yeah let's see how that goes okay so for the raw egg i am gonna add in some cauliflower as the base and i cook this in the microwave and then to give it some color i'm gonna add in some carrots and some vegan margarine and then in here, I have some nutritional yeast, some black salt, turmeric, paprika, black powder, black pepper, and some corn starch. And I'm gonna blend it. For my miso soup, I made hella lazy, so I'm using an instant pack, and I just added some tofu in, and I'm gonna use that, add some hot water, and then good to go. This is the natto I have, it just comes in this little pack and as long as you don't use the little dashi pack, it is vegan and to give it more flavor, I'm going to add in some soy sauce and I'm going to use a little mustard packet. If you've never tried natto before, you definitely should. It's an acquired taste but it's really good for you and it's really tasty. I'm just going to give it a mix. You can add it on top of your rice. I'm also gonna put on some green onions, which I think is essential and like not an option. <laughs> I wanna try and make it into like a circular Ta da! <laughs> so I have all my food here with me and I'm gonna give this a taste test. I'm actually really excited to try this because it kind of looks so like yolky and eggy and just like how um I used to eat it. The natto itself is slimy so it kind of resembles egg already and then like the raw egg yolk gives it like this creamy texture. That's really nice. I got some on my face. Mmm. Honestly, the egg yolk on its own is actually already really good, but mixed in with the natto, because the natto is naturally like really slimy, it resembles that eggy, like raw white egg consistency and then with the creamy egg yolk this is a pretty bomb combo okay i'm gonna try the miso soup even though i already know it's really good i love miso soup it's so satisfying all right i'm gonna go finish this and then i'll see you for lunch i love doing this with natto you can see like all the strings i'm gonna add the japanese sweet potato into this other thing and it just steams the Japanese sweet potato into like this nice um, textured sweet potato. I don't really know how to explain it. It's not like a baking a potato but it's also not like a microwaving. It kind of like steams it into here with the rocks under and it makes it really nice. And it comes out super soft like this and when you like cut it open it's perfect. Yum. I could live off this stuff, it's so good. I just finished eating my breakfast and I had two servings of the natto gohan and now I'm gonna be making some lunch. I'm actually going out for lunch so I thought it'd be fun to make like a bento box to bring with me on the go and fill it with all my favorite stuff I used to have as a kid. So I'm thinking of filling it with some onigiri and some tamagoyaki which I think is gonna be like the hardest thing to make and also some fruits and vegetables. 
and this pork ginger um, stir fry thing um, using some vegan mock meat. To make the tamagoyaki mixture, I'm just gonna make an omelet kind of mixture. So I'm adding in some silken tofu, and then I have some seaweed dashi that's dissolved in water. A little bit of meaty, a bit of soy sauce, and I already measured out the other ingredients, but I basically have some nutritional yeast, chickpea flour, sugar, paprika, black salt, garlic powder, turmeric, egg replacer, and cornstarch. And I'm just gonna add that all in. I transfer it into another blender, and then Mom's gonna help me make it. Right, Mommy? Yay. Okay. We're using this special pan. It's not special, is it special? Oh my gosh, she's just going. All right. <laughs> Omelette soup? Uh, oh, you look. Oh, oh, mommy. Oh. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. We're adding in another layer. Our moment. Sushi mat to like make give it texture on the outside. And just press like gently. So while letting the egg cool down, I'm gonna make some onigiri with this shaker thing where mom got from Daiso. And you put the rice into this little like, container thing and you just shake it to make like little rice balls. So I'm gonna try it. I don't know if it works, but um is just getting low. My mom found some free ducket to put some like uh, flavor to the rice. And if you're just using plain rice, I would just add some salt into it, but this kind of gives it a bit of flavor, so yeah. Put an onion G. I think it's like a vegetable flavor. So I just put um the free cookie in two of them and I have salt in the third one and then I'm just gonna mold them. No, not a lot, right? These are not onigiris, they're more like rice balls. One bite rice balls. Oh! <gasps> 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 cuteness. We're gonna make some ginger pork now. I'm adding in some onions. And I'm gonna add in the soy tofu. That's it. I'll quickly stir fry that. Okay, I'm gonna try cutting the egg now and hope for the best. It's cooled down, so I'm just gonna go down the middle first. So it doesn't really have that like swirl, but I think it's because I didn't cook the outside long enough for each of the layers. But I'm gonna give it a taste still. All right, I'm gonna try this one. I'm not expecting much because it doesn't look like the tamagoyaki, but it has the smell of it. Why? The taste is good. It's eggy and sweet because the tamagoyaki I used to eat as a kid was like on the sweeter side. Um, I think the texture is just off. But I am now determined to like make this proper but i'm still gonna eat this because it's actually good it's just not tamagoyaki so yeah it just has like that um i don't even know what the texture is it's like it's eggy texture but not really yeah i'm just assembling the bento boxes right now and my mom's helping me make it look pretty <laughs> this is the end product of my bento box and i added in some black beans here's the eggs that i'm actually going to eat and then um the rice balls a little bit of tomatoes, and then the other one I put in the ginger pork, the vegetables, and a little bit of fruits. Okay, I'm about to head out now, so I'm gonna take this with me on the go. I just got back home and now I'm going to make some dinner. I'm feeling really lazy and I don't really want to cook, so I thought I'd make some takikomi gohan, which is Japanese mixed rice made all in the rice cooker. You just throw like a bunch of ingredients in the rice cooker and let it cook and do its thing. I used to eat this all the time when I was growing up and from what I remember, it had rice of course, carrots, shiitake mushrooms, um, 
hijiki, some bamboo and gobo or like a lotus root, some kind of protein, either chicken, shrimp, or in my case, I get a shitofu. I think that's it. And then for the seasoning, it's like a soy sauce meeting base, but I'm going to ask my mom and ask her how she exactly made it. I'm going to text her right now, actually. And also, I don't know if I can make it in the pressure cooker or if I have to use the rice cooker. So I'm going to ask her real quick. Okay, she's texting me back and she said a pressure cooker would probably not be as good. So I'm going to use a rice cooker. Um, she also sent me the base recipe that she used to use. She said for the seasoning, um, she gave me like rough estimates because she's like, I never really measured anything, just go by taste. But she uses soy sauce, meaning sake, and some dashi powder. And then she said to like put some into a cup and just go by taste. So I'm going to do that. Hopefully it works out well. Yeah. So I just finished gathering all my ingredients and cutting everything up and kind of measuring some stuff out. Um, let me show you what I got. So aside from the rice, this is the other ingredients we're working with. I have some hijiki, carrots, shiitake mushrooms, um, bamboo, kombu, and the sauce. And this is like the shiitake water that it was like soaking in. I'm going to add in two cups of rinsed rice. And then I'm going to add in um, the sauce. And also a bit of water just to get the other dashi out of there. I'm going to give this a little mix. Okay. I'm going to add in the kombu stalks. And this is just for flavor. I'm going to layer it over. And then I'm adding in the shiitake mushrooms. And then I'm going to add in the bamboo and the hijiki and then lastly the carrots. I'm feeling like I should add another half tablespoon of soy sauce so I'm just going to add that because why not. <laughs> I'm going to add enough water so it hits the two right here, the two cup mark. It's a little higher than the two point mark, but I put in all the seasoning in already, so I don't want to take out water. So I'm just gonna leave it, I think. This is the rice cooker I have. You can see that they have the mixed rice setting. I highly recommend a good rice cooker for good rice. Like the difference between an Asian rice cooker and a conventional rice cooker, I think is really different. It like changes the way it cooks the rice. So I'm on the mixed rice setting and I'm just gonna press start. While I'm waiting for a snack, I'm just going to have an orange and a bit of grapes. So while I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm going to make some agyotashi tofu, which is um, soft tofu that's lightly deep fried with potato starch coating. And then I'm going to make a sauce for it with some soy sauce, meeting, and some kombu dashi. Uh, it's really easy to make, so yeah. I'm taking some tofu around this size-ish, and I'm just going to coat it with some potato starch. I mean, you, can, uh, you have to put on part of it. You can see that the little piece there is starting to uh, fry, so I'm gonna put this big one in carefully. Ooh. And then you're just gonna let it fry. Okay, mom's like, move it, move it. And just let it be two, three minutes. So once it's all like crispy, you can hear all the crackles, you're just gonna take it out. Oh, quite, quite, quite. <laughs> ah. Alright. Ja -ja. I'm gonna place it here. Woohoo! Let's go eat. Okay, so it beeped like five minutes ago, so it should be done. I'm gonna open it. Ooh, it's nice and warm. Oh, it smells really nice. Okay. I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna take out the little kombus. There's like little bits on the bottom that gets burnt and that's like the best part. It gets a little crispy, but yeah, I'm just going to mix it through. This is the final product and this is what I was talking about with the crispy bottom. It's like crispy rice. So good. And scratch the edamame idea. I went with some black beans instead. I'm going to try the takikomi gohan. And this is the little crispy part I was talking about, which is like the best part. I'm actually going to save that for last. I always do that. I save like the best part for last. Mm. Mm. This legit tastes better than what I even remember. 
I'm gonna try the agedashi tofu now and I'm probably gonna make like another one because this is definitely not enough but dunk it in the sauce and mmm mm-hmm the best I'm gonna make one or two more of the tofu and probably have like two or three bowls of this and of course the black beans which is nothing special it's just like sweet and Japanese black beans and yeah after I finish this I have an idea for some dessert so I'll see you guys then so for dessert since it's springtime I thought I'd make like a shido on um, sakura infused kind of dessert because it's like nice and pink um, I was thinking of making like a daifuku, which is like a strawberry with anko and then um, mochi on the outside and then kind of do it like an ombre, so like the dark strawberry and then the shiro an will have like a little bit of sakura powder to it and then the mochi will have like a lighter color of pink. Uh, in my mind, it looks really pretty, so I'm gonna try and recreate that or what I'm imagining in my head. Shiroan is basically sweetened white bean paste and it's really popular to like infuse sakura into it because it's like pink and spring-like. I've seen sakura shiroan in breads and cakes and like mochi and wagashi so it's super popular in Japan and I wanted to recreate it because I think it's really pretty too so let's go. So the night before I had these white beans soaking and then I cooked it up in the pressure cooker and then I just made uncle by blending it with some sugar. Making the shiroan right now. We're just adding a little bit of sakura powder. Give it a little bit of pinkness. We're gonna add in some sugar for sweetness now. You're just gonna stir consistently until it like gets thicker and becomes like unko and you can mold it and stuff. Consistency should kinda end up like that. It's like kinda thick, but not too thick. You don't wanna get rid of the moisture too much or else it's gonna be too thick and then it also thickens when it cools. So this is the right amount of consistency. So there's some mochiko or shiratamako in here. Add some water and I colored it with some beet juice. And then just mix until incorporated. Going into the microwave, 600 watts for two minutes. The uncle turned purple, not pink, so you know, I'm gonna retest this recipe here, but we're just gonna put it on some saran wrap and then mold the strawberry inside. I just give the mochi a mix and then I put it back into the microwave for another minute and a half. All right, I just floured this with a little bit of cornstarch and then we're gonna transfer this mochi mixture onto here and then cut it up into six pieces. Flour your hands. My hands can tolerate like insane heat. But be careful when you do it, if you try to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut into six pieces. And then you just wanna flatten it, kinda try to make it circular if you can. I mean, I'm just eating this. I'm not taking pictures of this today, so. Plop. Ooh. All right, now we wrap it like a present. All right, I have unsuccessfully made my little mochi thingies. I mean, okay, they don't look too bad, right? Like. I'm definitely going to remake this for the blog, um, improving the uncle and also the way I wrap it, but this is just a test. It looks like taro, but it was supposed to be like a pink uncle, but it turned out purple. So I'm just going to try and fix that, but yeah, I'm sure the taste is still very good. Hmm. <laughs> The second one looks a little bit better. Oh God. <laughs> I got some extra mochi pieces and mochi is so good. Mm. After I made dessert yesterday, I went out and I totally forgot to end off the video. So I just wanted to jump on here real quick again and do a quick outro. It was actually such a fun day yesterday. I got to experiment and kind of make new foods. And I'm really excited to continue the series. Hopefully, I want to do one like once a month. Let me know what country or culture you'd like to see next down in the comment section below. I'm already thinking like Thailand or Korea or Malaysia. Um, I feel like those foods are more comfortable making with. But because I want to step out of my comfort zone, I'm also, of course, open to like other places. Europe, France, Germany, Brazil, Australia? 
I meet you to eventually do it everywhere. But yeah, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and your support always. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Smoking no cooking the hot pot. Fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Looking up, open the park pot.